I'm all wet. Had to change my t-shirt. All because of this baby. And this part of the video is gonna be called YouTube Fools. Okay? Because you see how I loaded this? So the dozer is angled which way? Is angled that way. Right? So that's how you have to do it. So basically, if the dozer is like this, this is the dozer, this is the blade, right? And then you put it like this, and the dozer sits straight, and it, let's say it's still too too um, wide. So how do you make it smaller? You have to turn the dozer in the direction that the blade is turned. You understand? So this is the trailer. So if the dozer sits like this, sideways, and the blade is like this, like ideally, let's say the blade is almost alongside the trailer so then you have eight feet right you know you know what i mean so it's like this so if you angle the dozer that way you have to fold the blade that way one guy says turn the blade the other way <laughs> you are a fool sir and how do i know uh i came in the morning because i was lying in bed you know this thing would not leave me any rest because I'm telling you like yesterday that cop was behind me and I'm like I don't like this you think I like this and then the other guy says lift it like this maximum and put it here right so first off the blade has to sit on the trailer it cannot be one side cannot be in the air but I I, um, I tilted it like that like maximum and I put one side down so this side was like here okay and so what happened is that because this side goes down and that's the widest point now you have to understand it goes in a circle right so this becomes more narrow but this thing when it goes up like before when it was on the floor it was here so when it starts going down this point tries to go you know away from the trailer and so when i did it like that one side in the air which is illegal but the the width went increased by about almost one foot no maybe like eight inches okay so i figured there's a point you st it's still beneficial to raise this and actually i that's what I, I came here to do i came here to lift one side slightly but put it like this and so uh but first of course i checked to make sure the before i took all the chains off i I, I ran inside and I turned the key just to see if the dash would light up. So the dash was light up, so right lit up. So right away I turned it off and I took my chains off and I started the machine. I, and I thought, what am, what do I do if it dies with the blade in the air? You know, that would be that would be an interesting question because then I have to call a mechanic and change batteries or get an alternator because I cannot drive with the blade in the air. And so I was running back and forth. I'm telling you, like like a headless chicken or a tailless salmon no wait salmon is in the ocean no headless chicken uh that's why i'm still i'm still sweating so back and forth back and forth so i tried everything so i tried put it like this does not work i tried putting this over here uh does not work i tried flipping it the other way does not work it became it became like now it's just 12 feet if you measure from here to here or maybe just like 12 one and uh the other way it was like 14 like 13 i don't know but this blade uh it's a very complex uh geometry of this right because you see this and then it increases here and then of course i looked at this side those are bolts right you see this they were all full of dirt but this piece i look in the back and i see <laughs> six bolts one two three four five six and there's a crack in here so this whole piece is removable and i measured the difference between this point and this point guess what it's three inches like it doesn't seem like much but if i can't uh, if i could take off if i could reduce this by three inches that's a big deal you know then i'll be definitely on the 12 and so i i tried my uh you know adjustable range 
they don't want to budge so I sprayed a bunch of oil on them you know that uh, unlocking uh, spray nothing and then I saw a guy a friend of mine he was just he just came in the truck and I know this guy changes his own his own tires he works on brakes so he has all kinds of tools you know he's the guy that you guys like right he can probably change up the engine in his truck and he's driving the same Volvo probably that he he's been driving for 10 years or something like a very old uh, where is he like his wife came over in a nice Volkswagen SUV so he parked some, somewhere yeah that gray white silver Volvo he he has a 48 foot uh, flatbed he works for Mercer Mercer transportation out of uh, Louisville Kentucky and so I stopped him I know he's a nice guy because today's Saturday I know cat is open probably but those guys are crazy busy you know there's a trailer shop in there there's a trailer shop like a mechanic in there but of course he's not he's not in today and so I decided to ask this guy I asked the Mercer guy if he has any tools like that basically any power tools and a torch or electric tools and he says he might have something in his garage which is like five minutes away and so he says give me your your phone number and I'll call you if I don't have it or if I have it I'm in I'm coming and then he says I think I can take it off so now I'm gonna go while he's gone I'm gonna go probably get some cash for him in case he can do it and charge the battery on my GoPro because it's because it's dying man it's hot all right this is the hero of the day Vlado from Mercer Vlado show us what he did Here's some money for your okay. right, for your trouble you. so Vlado really helped me out here and this is the thing I was talking about you see so now we gained three inches because it was over here so now it should be much better did you have to heat it no no you just use the what electric electric uh... electric yeah cool all right all right yeah and this is this is the smallest dimension smallest size i could make yeah. you know i cannot make it any smaller because this thing is just you know a monster yeah no, it's too big. yeah but you know what's cool about it it's a six-way blade so you can really it goes up down sideways you know it's a very cool machine yeah so okay cool thank you very much Vlado yeah, say hi too. to my yeah. viewers okay. thank you. <laughs> thanks thank you <laughs> I was just saying that yeah the guy had to take off these six bolts oh and because of this now it, I have a much better aerodynamics so I think I'm gonna even save money on fuel because now the air can go in here and this piece is not sticking out so wow so yeah this thing is in the cab now see even this can be taken off but of course that's not important so it was this piece see how it how it angled like this so now instead of here it's here so that's three inches and they all are very rusty oh and you see this over here so the blade pushes into the corner so it can go this way and so that strap prevents it from moving this way so yeah now i feel confident that i can deliver this thing But, like I explained before, I tried angle it the other way and I tried everything. This is the, this is the smallest size I could, I could create with this. 
so now yeah now it's just uh, gonna go grab something to eat it's a beautiful day in august the summer went by so quickly you know still very hot washed my car today because it was sitting here and all this stuff you know it just gets up in the air i love this car man oh and uh, one cool thing happened i i parked uh, i parked i think it's these guys you see these garbage trucks i didn't see so many nails before here I found two I found two this morning over here um, so yeah I was sitting at the, the coffee shop and saw hello yes hi what can I do for you Yeah, that's me. I'm good. Sorry, what mandate? Yeah. Oh yeah, I already have that. I have the e-log I use keep tracking your competitor. So I'm doing good. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. Yeah, basically somebody was trying to sell me something like this. Mandate. You know, and these people, they always call themselves, like basically these are uh, intermediaries that sell, let's say, e-logs or some kind of a DOT registration services and they all call themselves to make it sound like they're part of the government you know I don't think they should be allowed to do that like you know you would receive an email it says your M150 filing has been is late please file now to avoid the fine I'm like, who the heck is this? I, I scroll through the page to see at the bottom, and I think they have to make that disclosure. At the bottom it says, like a name of the company, you can see that it's a private entity. It's not part of a government, you know? But they always send you some like frightening emails saying that you are in violation of something where you know I know that I'm not but like some I have to do some filing over there or I just this morning I got something about Kentucky my Kentucky number you know I have to be registered in Kentucky for because uh, they have a separate tax in there or you know do your annual Kentucky over here like so why would I do it here if I can go directly to the Kentucky DOT website and do it over there you know but I don't know who they are trying to uh, trying to catch somebody that maybe doesn't know that you can do everything directly on the web directly with the company with the government because that's all these guys do you know they want to be an intermediary where they uh, charge you let's say 10 20 bucks to do some filing that you can perfectly well do yourself online so maybe they think because uh, I have a Russian name that you know I'm an immigrant uh, from a long time ago, maybe I don't speak English. I cannot write English. Probably that's who they're targeting So anyway, so that was my uh, Chore today. So like I said, I couldn't sleep. I was thinking about this dozer How I'm gonna you know, it's it's still pretty far right to like moving this and there's a bunch of scales like both on the Canadian side and on the US side there's DOT they don't like Canadian trucks, you know, like in Michigan, right? They always look for Canadian trucks with Canadian license plates so I don't want to give them any excuse to give me a ticket or to stop me and so I'm really happy that I came up with this solution and also because I was able to you know angle it a little bit uh, 
I, I, I probably get improved the width by about six inches today, you know, and that's a big deal with a load like this. Uh, so about 50,000 pounds, but that blade is a monster. So looking forward to unloading. I'll do an unloading video. Um, but I hope the batteries will last to drive it off because I suspect it might just die. Uh, midway like somewhere in the ramp because I already see the red light the red message saying that low power so low battery power but I made sure I disconnected the master switch so maybe it'll last but if not they will have to change the alternator or maybe a quick solution just replace the batteries again just so that I don't have to wait there till because you know changing an alternator will probably a couple of hours at least so I don't want to sit there for two hours and I couldn't find uh, anything else to do so I don't know like it's a stupid situation because I'll be empty let's say Monday and then next Monday I have to be in Michigan just around the corner at the Eaton uh, testing grounds because I promised them to do a video about that transmission so I have a week uh, to kill and so if I leave Michigan then I have to ha have to come back so I'm thinking Monday I'm going to email or call them and, and see if we can uh, move forward that uh, day because it's just me and the guy from Eaton. So maybe they're available earlier and then basically then I'll just take uh, a few days off and sit tight somewhere in Michigan and I'll go do for some photography, play my accordion and, uh, and then do the review of the Eaton transmission and then uh, start looking for a load so we'll see what happens next week but basically yeah next week might be uh, kind of like a uh, a little bit peaceful finally for me because I've been running around like like crazy this few weeks right so uh, uh, brawn drainage plow to Minnesota then empty to Baltimore then from Baltimore the wheel loader to Veldor Quebec and then from Veldor empty to Bolton Ontario picked up the dozer and now the dozer goes to Michigan Man. so now finally after I deliver this I'll uh, looks like I'll have a chance to uh, catch my breath have a good weekend